Welcome back to my mental health and crime channel. My name is Hudi London. I'm a licensed cognitive behavior therapist, that's a CBT therapist, and a licensed mental health counselor. I'd like to thank all my subscribers, viewers, for all your support, your kindness, your mindfulness. I really respect you all to the max. Because I can just see from you my comment channel, the intelligent questions, the loss, and the intelligent conversations you'll have with each other, respectful, mindful conversations you'll have, and I appreciate that to the max. That is really important because we all are adults on YouTube. It's our responsibilities of how we try to engage with each other because we all are aiming for the same goal to find out what happened to these four precious victims the reason i always say precious victims are they were young students they meant everything to the family and friends when we look at the pictures watch the videos we can just see how lively, how happy they were, how loved they were. Today I'd like to really focus on the timelines of the Idol Moscow case. In each and every case that I've been trying to spread awareness for. I always start with the timelines because if the timelines doesn't make sense, nothing is going to add up. Nothing. A good example is the case of five-year-old missing Summer Moon Rita Wells from Tennessee, Rogersville, Tennessee. Most of us know this case. Summer was seen lost with a mother and grandmother. I won't say that they're guilty because that's not in my place. But after researching, deep diving, watching everything I could about that case, and the way the parents, Summer's mother and father, were behaving, their lifestyle, with drugs and alcohol, coming intoxicated on the panels, on live streams, things were just slipping out of their mouth. So that's the reason I personally believe that they knew exactly what happened to their daughter. That was in 16th of June, 2021, when the Amber Alert was put out for summer moon retailers. Another case I can think of is the California City Boys. Luckily, that case was solved. Justice was served by California. Now, when it comes to the Idol Moscow case, these were precious victims. Was sudden in Idol University. Maddie and Kaylee were seniors. E and Zano were freshmen and juniors. On the 13th of November, 2022, tragically, these four students lost their lives these were victims in the most horrible, horrific manner. I personally believe it's a university is job to keep the students safe. And I don't believe the university did that. With all the body cams we saw from the police knocking at the doors because of the loud music, because of neighbors complaining, and different things. 
I personally believe that these are college students. They can party as much as they can they want to. But when we have local cab drivers talking to Idaho local news and telling them that this was a party venue, drugs were sold there, then automatically you have to take it into consideration. I'm not trying to put down the victims because I really care about them. I've invested my time, my research on getting justice for these poor students. I believe in the saying, never leave any rock unturned because you don't know where the secrets lies. I believe that this college, the police could have done much more to avoid this horrific situation. And I actually believe that they know exactly what happened to these students. Now this is all my thoughts and opinion. And I believe they could have done something about that, but it was too late. Although these students were living off campus, they were just two minutes walk from the campus itself. They paid the tuition fees to the university. It's the university's job to keep these students safe. When we have the police knocking at the door for two police calls within one day, which we have seen clearly, it just shows you that the police wasn't taking much interest or maybe after speaking to the students driving around to check what was exactly going on in this house. I personally believe that cab drivers, taxi drivers, Uber drivers, know a lot about people's pattern, especially if they drive you around often. Now this was a very small community. When the cab driver told the local news in Ido, Moscow, that he drove people there many times to pick up drugs, then, then we should take that into consideration. For a cab driver to risk his job and tell that to Idaho News, I believe it's true. We know that there was a lot of rumors going on in the beginning, a lot of speculations about people going to be shaped down for drugs. We had Kim, WSU Kim. Many people don't believe he's, that she's genuine. Well, I'll tell you why I believe that she's quite genuine. I believe Kim added a lot later on, maybe to get attention or maybe to cover up her tracks of what she was lying about. But there was truth in a lot that she said. Now what happened on the 12th to the 13th is something I've been showing in my channel for a very long time. I keep on repeating it too sometimes so that the new subscribers and viewers could get a bit collections of different things that has happened that night. I've always said from day one, and I still believe this, this is my opinion only. These were two separate targets, different motives. I don't personally believe that Kaylee had a soccer, so she was the motive or that, or the, I mean that she was the target. I don't believe Maggie was the target. I don't believe Zana was the target. I don't believe he was the target. I believe they all four were the targets. I believe there was personal beefs brewing with these college kids. 
That's why I believe the 4chan article is right. Whoever wrote the 4chan article could have been either one of the two. Either somebody boasting about the evil work they did or it could be somebody trying to snitch on the people who actually did it. In the beginning, there was rumors that the 4chan article was done by the two Davids, David L, David B. And I could see where their motives and who their targets were. They mentioned clearly in the 4chan that it was Maddie, E, and Zana. They said Kaylee was just there. Wrong place, wrong time. But then yet again, I believe that Kaylee was a target of someone else, if not the Pratt brothers. The reason that I say that is, I personally believe like Kaylee's parents said that Kaylee had Kaylee and Maddie's wounds and injuries was not the same. I do believe that. I've heard actually both. I've heard that Maddie's wounds and injuries were worse than Kaylee, and we've heard that Kaylee's was worse than Maddie's. I believe Kaylee's. injuries and unaliving was due to a crime of passion. Reason I say that is we had Mayor Le saying in the beginning that this was a crime of passion. You should always, this is what I believe personally, always listen clearly, do active listening and listen to what was said in the beginning. Because later on, people start changing their stories. They do not only change their stories, they change the whole timeline. They change a fact that Dylan and BF were supposed to be sleeping downstairs, but they change the timeline and they change fact that DM was sleeping downstairs too, elevating the whole situation and making it seem like DM was sleeping upstairs, which I don't buy. I'll tell you the reason I don't buy it. Chief Rai said himself, I'll quote his words. When the reporter from ABC News asked him in the press conference, she asked him clearly about the surviving roommates. She said, were they injured? He said, no. Were they there? He said, yeah, we are trying to figure out and trying, trying to investigate. I still can't tell you much about them. And then he was asked a question about the surviving roommates. And immediately the chief said, I did not say that the surviving roommates were witnesses. I said, I just said they were there. Now let me repeat this. Chief I said that I did not say the surviving roommates were witnesses. I just said they were there. Now this is a press conference that the whole world is watching. ABC News, NBC News, CNN News, whether there are choice of what we watch or not, they are big time news channels. For him to be insisting and saying the surviving roommates are not witnesses, they were just there. is really fishy. Because six weeks later, the same chief, Fry, said that BF was sleeping on the first floor and 
DM was actually a witness on the second floor. She saw a man with, a, with bushy eyebrows. She saw a man with a mask. Athletical built. All of a sudden, BF and DM were supposed to be sleeping in the first floor. All of a sudden now we have, B, uh, we have DM sleeping on the above floor. She opens her door three times. She hears a man say, don't worry, I'm here to help. I'm here to help. DM heard someone who sounded like Kaylee playing with a dog. She heard rummaging upstairs, according to some news channels. She opened the door and she said, keep quiet. I'm trying to sleep. We know they're college students' party. But DM and BF were out that night. Why would they want to sleep on a Saturday night? I can imagine if it's getting late. But these are people. These are people who party. And I mean party. Because we've seen how many times the police were there to warn them. And the neighbors have complained. And we've seen that there's been a time the day the police officer went, went behind towards the sliding door and he spoke to Hunter and Kaylee. He had no reason to go there, but he yet he decided to go there. He told the other officer, just let's go there and warn them, just in case. What does that show you? That this house, 1122 Kings Road, used to party a lot, loud music, neighbors were reporting them, and not once did the police ever think of reporting it to the D. In fact, they threatened them. Do you remember when the police knocked at Zana's door? And Zana came out and spoke to them. Do you all remember what the police told Zana? If this noise, if we have to come here the next time, we will report this to the dean of the university, that is Mr. Eccles. The day the police came and spoke to Kaylee, let me make this clear. The police officer told Kaylee, I wouldn't want to come here and give you a penalty. I prefer you using your money on buying beer. Now, let me repeat that. That was hard for me to hear. I don't mean hard that I miss the words. It was hard for me to digest the fact that a policeman actually told a young girl, I would rather that you use the money on beer. As a parent, it was tough for me to hear, and especially as a mental health counselor. Why would the police encourage young students to use the money on beer? Makes me baffled. That they did not report it to the dean that they came twice in one day, red flag for me. So what was the police actually doing when it came to all the complaints in 1122 Kings Road? Was these students Were these students having some kind of, let me find the right word to say it actually, let me rephrase it. Was these officers doing any favors for these children 
these students were they being lenient because there was some kind of deal going on now i'll tell you why i said that the officer who came to kaylee had no reason to go to the house it was daytime and if you pay attention when the officer says let's go and warn them just in case they make noise okay that's fair but they were making noise so why did the officer take a picture of Kaylee's ID on his phone i would love to know that because over here if the police give you a warning they give you a warning they write down your name but they don't take a picture of your id because they know your address they know exactly who you are and especially after so many complaints from this house how can the police officer was it officer pay who came and spoke to zana how come he didn't take a picture of zana's id he just looked at zana's id looked at zana warned zana and said that if i have to come here another time i'm reporting this to the dean that's the right way it's supposed to be done coincidentally at 301 the banfield stop is happening at the same time you hear a female yelling stop it stop why The strange thing is there was four figures running. I can't get over that fact and I am so so impatient for this trial to start. I hope Aunt Taylor answers that question. Who were the four figures running? Where did they come from? Where were they headed to? You could see they were headed to the Sigma Chi If you ask me where they were coming from they're coming from 1122 Kings Road. The time was 3:16. Could that be the reason the police changed the timeline? I don't you believe parents have a reason to lie. He, his mother said 2 a.m. is the hardest time for us. I don't think Stacy Chapin is just guessing that something happened at 2 a.m. Now let's give that woman credit and respect because if I'm not wrong he is mother and father were the only parents who did a private autopsy for their son. Why would they do a private autopsy? maybe because they don't trust the corpse maybe because they don't trust the framework the timelines the alibis or maybe because they know more so 2 a.m. something happened to a couple i was the first person to sh show it to my channel the grub truck at 2 a.m. when the crowd was yelling zana zana no zana zana what were they watching i've got i used to get so much heat for the fortune the grub truck and the banfield but now i can see that everyone is talking about them using the same pictures that i have used other people would have maybe given a copyright strike for people who are just taking things on my channel contents that I found I know the grub truck banfield are there for out they are there for us all youtube creators to find what we see but it is unfair when people start directly taking from your content but this is not what I'm talking about in fact I'm I'm happy I'm really happy that other people are picking up on certain things that i have been saying over a year but i'm not very happy that people are directly taking things that i've put out to my channel 
because in YouTube, we do things under fair use purpose. But when people don't give you the credit, it just isn't good. But moving away from that, what I'm trying to say is what is happening in the grub truck, what is happening at Banfield. Only Lord knows what happened at the grub truck. I mean, at the corner. But I believe they all are connected. Let's start from the fact that Kaylee, Maddie, and Jack John Showalter walking down. I put it on a clip, I believe, two weeks ago. Go, go down my channel and you see. And you can literally clearly hear Sir Walter starting by saying, we are going to get you for that Maddie. We are going to get you for that Maddie. Ouch. What is he going to get Maddie for? As soon as he says, we are, we are going to get you for that Maddie, that is when Kaylee says, Maddie, what did you tell Adam? And Maddie says, I told Adam like everything. Now let's try and break that bit by bit. Why would Showalter say, we are going to get you for that Maddie? Who is we? That is clear to see that Showalter wanted to get Maddie because he said Maddie's name. It doesn't take a genius to understand that Kaylee was walking with, walking with Maddie, so he meant both. What happened that night? Was it about money? Was it about drugs? Was it about love? Was it about jealousy? Was it about hate? Was it about retaliation? Was it about revenge? What was going on, Jack Showalter, for you to have said, we're going to get you for that Maddie. What did Maddie do? What did the poor girl do? Because you actually passed a threat to Maddie. We are going to get you for that. It can't be a coincidence that Jack Showalter you said we are going to get you for that, Maddie? And guess what? Three hours later, you really got Maddie? And Kaylee? And Zana? And Eaton? Now explain to me. Make it make sense. What were you going to get Maddie for? What did Maddie do? Did Maddie snitch? Did Maddie do something to your money, drugs? What could it be? Was there a shakedown, like WSU Kim said? I'm just asking the questions. I'm, I'm asking questions that we should be focused on. I'm asking questions that after researching and digging into so much and exposing so much, I hope that Ann Taylor you have been watching my clips. I really hope. Because I want you to pay attention to what Saeed is doing in the band field. Now, I found out to my research that Saeed was a good friend of Zana and Eve. He had nothing to do with Kaylee and Maddie. So when I say I believe that these are two separate attacks, there's a reason I believe they're two separate attacks. The three boys on Banfield and Saeed are all the age of Eve and Zana. Pay attention to that. Freshmen and juniors. The police did not ask the young man to take down his glasses, to take off his glasses so that the officer is supposed to be doing his duty 
and check in. Are they really intoxicated? Are they on drugs? Or are they sober? The officer told the three boys, I could see y'all stumbling down. So the officer, the undercover cop, saw them stumbling down because they're intoxicated, but he didn't ask them the international police code, take off your glasses, take your hands out of your pockets. That didn't happen. Why? Just a question, did the police know what was going down that night? Because they can clearly hear a female yelling, stop it, stop. You see a black truck. First of all, you see a, a car light flashing from 1122 Kings Road. There was a car in front of 1122 Kings Road. And then you see a black truck going right in front of Taylor Avenue on the Banfi. And then the light goes off at 11.22 Kings Road. What was going on? Now let me remind you of something else that's interesting. When this crime happened on Facebook, there were some students from Chicago, Illinois, who did a tripod and they had their camera rolling. They weren't there, obviously. The camera was rolling and the camera caught a young blonde woman, female, running hysterically from 1122 Kings Road. Guess what else? The tripod caught because the people who made it wrote it on Facebook and within two days the messages were deleted I think it was gagged by the FBI or by Ido Moscow they didn't want us to see that the another interesting thing is not only did they catch a, a female hysterically, hysterically running from 1122 Kings Road, they caught a truck parked in front of 1122 Kings Road. So was it that black truck or was it the white truck, the pickup white truck that we saw when Kaylee and Maddie was walking with Jack Showalter down down from the corner club to the grub truck. Was it that one? I find that to be interesting. So pay attention to all the red flags, according to me, happening between 1.30, no, actually 1.42, 1 1.44, from the grub truck when Maddie and Kaylee enter, and we see David L., and his two mates churning away from the camera before the girls walk in. Red flag number one. Jack Showalter looks at them, nods his head. Number two. Number nine. Calls Maddie. Everyone thinks, oh, that's sweet. They're friends. He's calling Maddie and giving him a giving Maddie a hug. No, there's something going on there. Maddie said clearly something in his ear. As soon as Maddie left. He shows number eight the sign that he's going to put someone to sleep. Why would you want to put someone to sleep after someone told you something in their ear? Could Maddie have asked for something? I won't say what it is. You all can figure that out. How come there's no toxicological reports? Apparently, I heard from some creators that the toxicological reports came out negative, but I believe, I refuse to believe that. You know why? I don't read articles and what articles say. This case is on a gag order, so no one would know if the toxicological reports were negative, positive, 
or whatever. I believe, I don't know about E and his family, but I believe Zana, Maddie, and Kaylee, I hate to say this, was badly, badly injured. Because all three girls have something in common besides living in the same house. All three girls were cremated. And that makes me believe 